DeKrieger, absent. Snyder, absent. Brown, absent. Taylor? Here. Dubrovic? Here. King? Here. Windover? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Okay. So I need a um, motion to approve the agenda for tonight. So move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No public comments, or are there public comments? No one's here, so I assume not. It doesn't have to do with the agenda. Approval of the September 9th, 2013 minutes, meeting minutes. Um, Joe, I have one recommendation for this, sure. and I thought of it when I read it, and, and Ed mentioned it too. We should add to the minutes that I read that letter that Ed had submitted that night, remember, regarding the model ordinance? Okay, we can do that. Just whoever approves it, just uh, uh, approve it with the correction that uh, Ed's letter be added. That his letter was read? And, and we'll, you'll see that in the next okay. seven minutes, so. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so can I have a motion for, or are there any other changes that we want to make to the minutes? Okay, so does somebody want to make a motion for the amended minutes? Yep, I'll make a motion that we, um, amend the minutes to reflect that the letter from Ed was read and considered by the commission. Second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay. No public hearings tonight. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with our new business, our work application on 217 and a half South Park Street. Jerry, do you want to start with... Yeah, we have a, a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to let Mike do it, and okay. he'll uh, take the, the podium there, so to speak. Do you want this, Mike? Do you want the... Sure. Should work. Basically, this is a summary uh, presentation of the of the packet, and uh, we'll go through it. Uh, as you can see, Mr. Hines is here tonight, the applicant, mm -hmm. so if you have any questions, too, with him. And I'm sure it will want to add something to what Mike is going to say. So go ahead, Mike. Okay. Uh, what we have this evening is a work application for the address 217 and a half South Park Street within the Courthouse Hill Historic District. The applicant is Burton Hines, who is here today. Uh, again, the site is 217 and a half South Park Street, uh, which is actually accessed from the alley that runs between Park and I believe it's Rush Street. The work application packet that you all received should have Mr. Hines's construction activity application. It should have the historic district survey sheet. Uh, which does show it as a contributing site. We have included the historic district design guidelines for both windows and siding. We have taken some photos of the site, which we have included in your packet, and they're also uh, in this presentation. There is an older photo of 1407 East Chapin Street, uh, which this building would be just to the north of. Uh, that photo is undated. It clearly was not from 1904 when the structure was built. There is also an aerial photo of the site uh, in your packet, and we've uh, enclosed with, I believe, a yellow line uh, the location as to where it is in relation to other buildings around it. It is a contributing site, according to the historical district. It was built by Frank A. Cobbs in 1904. It was presumably used in conjunction with the Cobb home, which is located at 407 East Chapin Street. It was eventually sold for residential purposes. The historic district survey sheet indicates the current use as a single family residential dwelling. It has been updated over the years with vinyl siding, windows, and doors. Uh, none of the siding, windows, or doors appear to be original from when it was built in 1904. The site frontage and the access, again, is from a public alley, uh, which runs off of uh, uh, North uh, Park Street there? No, not Park. Uh, 
South Park. This here is a view from 407 East Chapin Street, and this structure you can see behind it. Um, as you can see from Chapin Street, it's it's not that visible uh, from Chapin Street, and it is behind there. These are photos. One is of the on the left of the south exterior wall of the structure, and the one on the right is the west exterior wall. And these are the two sides that this work application does pertain to. And we'll come back to that uh, again after we look over the application. The proposed improvements that Mr. Hines has, he wants to remove the four windows. So I'm going to go back to that picture. He wants to remove the four windows two on the south side and two on the west side that are closest to that larger picture window you look at at the ground level. So what he is doing is looking to remove those. Then, I'm going back here, then he plans to cover the openings with the framing and siding that is similar to what's currently found on the exterior walls of this building. Having done that, he plans to remove portions of the existing vinyl siding uh, to determine if the siding underneath is original and in good condition. If it is in good condition and original, he does plan to strip the vinyl siding off uh, and paint the entire structure of the wood siding. So that is all predicated on the condition of it, I think, probably more than anything. To match the Snyder uh, home. Okay. Mm -hmm. To match the Snyder home and, and I, I hope it's the same siding as the Snyder home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, this is the two sides that we're looking at. Going forward here now. The existing windows, based on their style, the design, the recent use of the structured dwelling as residential, none of the proposed windows for removal do appear to be original, uh, especially considering the construction date of 1904. Other features, such as the access doors from the exterior, they also are of a more modern vintage. Um, they also certainly do not appear to be the original doors from when this structure was built. The Historic District Commission action on this is to one of three things, basically approve this work application as submitted, uh, not approve the work application, or approve the work application with conditions. Uh, I'm going to again go to uh, pictures here uh, of the both south exterior wall and the west exterior wall. Do you have anything you want me to go back or uh, we certainly, uh, any questions you might have for myself or Mr. Hines, he certainly knows the structure uh, both inside and out. I have a question, I, I probably of, of you, sir. Um, the angled window, I assume, must have been a like a garage door or Looks carriage like door, carriage so there right? There were horses and carriages in this structure somehow, although I can't figure out where they entered and exited. The carriages, I mean, and the horses. Not through Probably that. Probably where the big window is. Yeah, that was... Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Because the building behind the funeral home has a similar thing with the angle on the alley, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just had a question also, um, a couple of them. Just curious why you were going to remove the windows. Privacy mainly, mm -hmm. and heat, I suppose, getting heat in. But what they look to, and actually would give, you know, I wouldn't be looking right at the mansion either, and, and the Snyders wouldn't be looking into it either. The really nice view is straight out that big window towards the corner of Chapin right. and right. South Park. And it's really quite beautiful at night when you sit there just looking out that window. Out either side window, you're looking, you know, just big structures. There's no real view. 
This is a single family residence right now? It, yeah, I think it was rented out. I don't, I don't have any renters right now. I just am mm -hmm. uh, fixing it up. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what's underneath the siding. It sounds like that's going to be another part of this if, if it works out. Right now you're not. I'm not. I haven't ripped any of the siding off, so I'm mm -hmm. hoping the original wood is still there. Mm -hmm. And you know, and even if it was damaged, it could repair. Yeah, it can be replaced. Parts of it can be replaced. repaired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably the Snyder's had to do that. I'm not sure, but or Wendell Hank had it before. Mm -hmm. Any idea at all how old those windows are? I really don't know. Mm. They're relatively I, modern, uh, mm. you know, in the scheme of things. And they're in terrible shape, too. Are they vinyl windows? No. They're no. old wood, and they're all rotted, and that's another reason I want to take them out. The big picture window was recently broken and just replaced, but it was vandalized. I mean, mm. Mm. it's mainly for privacy. I think. Yeah, I, both Mr. Hines, as well as we, we tried to scour to see if we could find some old photographs yeah. and... Uh, you can talk to some of the neighbors, but nobody seems to have any. Mm -hmm. any don't think this one is uh, other than that one, which they have a copy of that too. Right. right. That's what I happen to have on my wall at my office. Yeah. Sure. In the historical flavor, they didn't have one, and it's on my wall in the office. Sure. They're hard so to that's, find. So that's mine. Yeah, that's the only one that we could find. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they're there. Those windows are not. There are other windows, though. There's other windows. Mm. But not those. Mm hmm. The uh, uh, commission and the staff had a, um, an email communication from one of our colleagues who is not here tonight, uh, who raised a question um, on the uh, dates uh, and the citations of the dates. Do you know about that, Jerry? Yes, uh, that was uh, um, Mark Snyder. Uh, in the Historic District survey sheets, you all should have, I believe, you have the booklet that has all the survey sheets, and we typically include a survey sheet, which we did here, and commonly uh, the survey sheets will reference uh, the, um, oh, uh, the, uh, I can't think of the name of the maps, uh, the, uh, Black maps, or the Sanborn? Uh, pardon? The Sanborn maps? The Sanborn maps. Mm -hmm. And what Mark was saying is that those references sometimes are not accurate. Uh, mm -hmm. They can be, I think in his case, six or seven years uh, out of accuracy pursuant to the date that was uh, that was provided by the Sandboard maps. The Sandboard maps are widely used, I should say, throughout the country mm -hmm. for dating purposes. But I think Mark was just indicating that you cannot necessarily use those. You can use them, but you need to be cautious in that they can be somewhat uh, inaccurate Mm -hmm. And again, he referenced his own property as being, I think, six or seven years difference between uh, when it was actually constructed and what the Sanborn map said. Yeah, the sand, that's because there were gaps in when they did them. Like, um, it, we might have some done in 1980, or 1884. You might not have the next set done until 1888. So it's like four to six years. So you don't really know specifically mm -hmm. within that time frame when something might have occurred. All you have is a gap. So I think that's what he was trying to allude to there, but... There, uh, just as a point of information, I'm digressing, I realize, but the maps are heavily used, for example, by firms that do environmental site assessments. They want to go back, because the old Sanborn maps will show you how properties were, at least in general nature, used at some point in time. Yeah, evolution of them. Yeah, and they're, they're heavily used. And then I, once in a while we get um, a property owner, well, like the Clam Lake Beer Company, for example, they contacted us, just happened to have some Sanborn maps of that area and uh, so they wanted to know what what was our building used for mm -hmm. way back when so we were able to provide some Sanborn maps. Mm -hmm. We just organized them at the um, museum at the Wexford County Historical Society Museum. We just got them organized and documented and you can access them now. We're going to be able to access them online as well so we'll talk about that at our next meeting because mm -hmm. that'll be it. I wanted to make sure everybody knew that those are available but um, <coughs> So going back to the, the windows, then, does anybody else have any other questions at this point for him? I, I guess if they, the windows obviously don't appear to be historic. I mean, they are wood windows, but it's hard to, to gauge when they were installed and whether or not they are, in fact, historic. Sometimes 
features can be deemed historic if they um, have been added during the 1920s, 30s, 40s, that type of thing, you know, because that particular era can be historic in and of itself. I don't know that that applies in this case with this being a former carriage house and with so many other alterations that have occurred. So um, that is interesting when you look in the picture because you can track your the upper windows look to be in even though they appear smaller possibly so I bet those are replacement windows as well at least in the picture they look taller the more um, the historic Victorian windows were often so tall and those seem a little shorter on the top but maybe that's um, deceptive because the windows below them they actually were like a window window mm -hmm. in the picture you know like a window right above another window yeah more symmetrical mm -hmm. and the door in the middle so actually mm -hmm. when you look at that west side the door is actually about where the door would have been even though of course it's not the original door and the upper windows are as well you know and then below that would have been two windows symmetrically below those two windows you know just two up two down so um, I was just curious, were you, because I know you're looking at restoring, and right now you're looking at filling that area in, had you thought of possibly duplicating, for instance, if this is your oldest document, I guess it's kind of, it's not a for sure that this is your original, obviously, but um, looking at duplicating the look of what was actually there. Like the view. I have a door over there where that car is, it's not my car, it's my carpenter's car, but mm -hmm. right behind it, there's a side door. There's another door too. On the other, another part of the house. There's two doors. Mm, on, that on that side. There now on that side. Uh huh. And then the little lean-to piece that's back there, or it sort of looks like a lean-to in the back, or behind no, the door. No, that's right. It's on the other side of the windows that I want to take off. Is on the on the right-hand side of the door to go in. And then <coughs> I think there's a window. Oh, then there's another door. So the beyond the back, the beyond the stuff that's propped up. Yeah, right. So further back. Mm, there's two doors there. Mm. The upper windows probably were there. Mm. So like I said, those could be, by those placement, could be those could be original. Mm -hmm. the locations of the original. Uh -huh. And then down below, the door on the far left beyond the step prop, that's, and that, that's obviously the wasn't there. The hay was put in. That's four feet wide. It's a door that mm -hmm. swings open up above there on the left uh -huh. side middle one there. That's so how we're getting all the materials up from the alley. Just lift them up, mm -hmm. sheets of plywood, and mm -hmm. yeah. pull them right in. Mm -hmm. If I may add, um, and this is done around the building, the style and type of window that, for example, is on the east side and also the north side, which this does not pertain to, they are of an even different style. Mm -hmm. sure they, are, they are different in style and age. And More modern or older? Well, the one side has, what are they, the little square block glass windows? Mm -hmm. right? uh, that's more on the east side. Um, the ones on the north side are wood, but they're of a different, you know. Okay. And they're rotted. They are, the ones on the north side do appear to be rotted or age, I should say, <laughs> not mm -hmm. age. They'd have to be replaced just because I couldn't get the real replacement. Are you, are you asking for a, a change on that north exterior wall then too? Just replace the windows? Just those four windows on either side of the big window. The two windows on either side of the big window. The south and the west. Oh, here. Just the west. I thought you said the windows on the other side were rotted, too. I, I apologize. Uh, oh, okay. Basically, I was just making reference that the style of the windows throughout the structure are not uniform. Mm -hmm. They're not uniform. Okay. This application is strictly for removing the two windows on the south side right. and removing the two windows on the west side. So I apologize. That. Right. We don't know. You said what date this picture no. was? Okay. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes it tough when you don't have really any historic photos that... I went to the historical museum and I couldn't find yeah. one I had. Mm -hmm. I had we also looked at equalization records to see if we could find anything. And, yeah. so, and Mark couldn't find anything he looked. I would tend to think this picture is going to be much closer to original, you know, than obviously the current structure 
is in the state that it's in. So those, those windows to me, just from the height, them being shorter, and um, you know they don't match the style of in, pla in the placement and the size and the character of them. I don't think they match the structure anyway, so I don't think it's a loss to the structure to take the windows out um, if you are looking at bringing it to being more historic, I would tend to go towards this picture, though it may not be original, it um, is certainly, you know, older, an older representation than what we currently have in its, you know, in its state today. Um, but, you know, like that door, that definitely, that angled window would have been the carriage house door. So, you know, it's not like right. you have all original features throughout anyhow, you know and the inconsistency in the windows on the other side, so I would be open to them being closed in, as he's suggesting, just because it is a determining structure, but there's so much of it percentage-wise that's already not matching original, which A, we can't prove, and B, this is probably closer to original, but it's not even close to this picture as far as placement of windows and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. I think that's a very aesthetically pleasing picture that is there myself. You know, if you ever chose to, it almost looks more like a home. Yeah. You know, their presentation there. We don't have to do away with side doors, though, for fire purposes. Mm -hmm. There'll be issues, I think, with... Yeah, mm -hmm. unless you put the carriage house door back in, because then, of course, you'd have an egress, but not unless you had a nice big... <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> well, you could make it into French doors, you know, yeah, mm, right there. I really wanted it for the second and third story. I'd like to show it to you mm -hmm. today. That's why I wanted it. Yeah, that would be story. interesting. Oh. It's really incredible. Have to explore it. Has a lot of the same, has a lot of the original building materials. Yeah, the, the flooring upstairs is coming to own. Mm, nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a workshop. Mm -hmm. oh, very nice. That'll be neat. Mm -hmm. well, we certainly hope that the wood uh, underneath is uh, usable. Yeah, salvageable. That would be... That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. That would be a nice... Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep all that wood. Well, sure, mm -hmm. sure. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. So as part of what we would be... Um, approving tonight would would also include the fact that you may be pulling the vinyl siding off and restoring the wood yeah, okay so it's a combination right. of not just the windows but also that right with, with the right. understanding that if if the wood you know right. is salvageable right yeah it right right um yeah that, that needs to be understood he's not going to just automatically if he starts pulling it off and oh my gosh you know right then it's probably going to just maintain what's there right now in terms of the vinyl siding. Just lay the siding the back down. I mean, as I can afford it, mm -hmm. I think the goal is mm -hmm. to replace the wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Those two go together, yeah. I think. Yeah, we definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we had just replaced the new wood siding on our home, so I, I think they did a pretty good job. Yeah, well, we, yeah, yeah. It's certainly more expensive than in the that. In way. the event that uh, you you get at it and you see that the wood is not going to be usable, you then want to close in the windows with this. I mean, how will that look appearance-wise? Good question. I think what I'd want to do is take some vinyl off the very back where you don't see at all that way in the back mm -hmm. and use that and then use something that's as close as I could in the back. So they would match where the public would see. You're telling me that you don't have the vinyl on there? Well, no, but you have the vinyl. If, if you have the vinyl, but want to get rid of the vinyl. If you buy a new vinyl, right. it's not going to match. Right, exactly. And you're not gonna, you don't want to do the whole thing all yeah. over again. But it would probably, you could find some on the back to borrow from the windows mm -hmm. and then redo that with as close as you can find the vinyl with color and you'd never see the two together. It's really hidden in the back. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, it's, it's hard, hard to get into the back. If he removed vinyl off of the back, you, nobody would ever see it. <laughs> Unless you can't you, get back there. Hardly yeah, you can hardly get back there. So you could right. use you could use that material in the front here, so to speak, and that would blend with what's already there. Just wondering how that's going to look, though. Um, I mean, are you going to see that there was something there? I don't know that you'd be happy with it. No, I wouldn't be as happy as having the wood restored and then painting it so it matches the center. Sure, of course. It probably will need some work. My guess is there's a reason why they put vinyl siding over it. A lot of times they just do it for low maintenance. You know, they think yeah. it's easier than painting. Yeah, easier. But if you stagger the the pieces of wood, 
the siding and or if you did the wood, same thing, if you stagger them across that window opening um, where the cut marks would be, um, the end-to-end -end pieces, they can hide the window, the formal window, yeah, because we did that in our house and had to use the same. We had 1960s windows that we covered up and then brought back the original ones. So in doing that, just brought in the wood siding pieces okay. and just sort of staggered the way we installed them. And, and you can't tell. Once it's all painted, you can't tell. So there's ways to do it. Good contractors will know how to do that. But. Okay. Does anybody have any other suggestions or questions? I'm okay with the proposal as he has it. I think it'd be great if one day you brought it back to look as as it does in the picture, you know, and which we're actually be putting a window in, taking the two out, but putting back in the original size and shape window there, and then where that door is down, which isn't really in quite the right placement anyway, but the door or whatever to the left of the prop stuff, you know, that would be a pretty neat, um, pretty nice. It look. should, yeah, it'd be helpful to find more. better photos. Yeah. We need to really even that south side exposure, you can't really see that hardly at all. Those are definitely different windows, you know, their placement and whatnot there too. So there's one for you to them, but the tree covers it. That tree right there. Yeah. The mm -hmm. tree isn't covering quite as much. Mm -hmm. it makes me think this is an older picture maybe. Mm -hmm. It's as big as the one I saw. Oh, mm hmm Yeah. Oh yeah. Could be. Could be. Okay, so Gwen, was that a motion? Then? Sir, I'll make a motion to approve the application as proposed. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck with the siding. I'd like to take a shirt when you Yeah. Yeah. My carpenter's working right now. Great. We'll keep you updated on the siding. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good to see how that goes. That'll play the screen you. project, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to old business. Um, update on the amendment to the historic district ordinance. That's an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> the, all of the amendments were approved by council, um, and they'll be published in the newspaper. Uh, typically what happens is she doesn't publish until the minutes at which they were approved have been approved. And that'll be done tonight. So the uh, they'll take effect 20 days after that, and so we're all set. So no okay. changes. Um, Jerry did a really good job, by the way. Um, of uh, did a presentation on the what we, our recommendations were for the model ordinance and what it entailed, and uh, it was a good PowerPoint. So it helped explain it. And I just got up and spoke briefly about the fact that we had all talked about it and discussed it and why we thought it was important and and covered that. So. Um, but yeah, they really didn't have too many questions and they were very uh, supportive of the work that we do and of the historic district in general and the importance of it for our community. And uh, so it was all positive and good. And I think it'll be a good thing for the city of Cadillac in the future. We did mention that it's, this ordinance covers all current and future historic districts. You have one ordinance even if you have multiple historic districts. So it's important to have one that will apply to all and be consistent from here on out. So hopefully we'll have more historic districts in the future. So that's why we thought it was important to look at. So anyway, is there a positive though? Um, I think that's it for old business. We have no other tabled items. Informational items, I will bring to the next meeting what we've done at the museum because we finally got our research library in place, our historical research library. We've spent about six months working on that and um, have all types of uh, information that's been organized in files and in bookcases of historical resources involving maps, pictures, newspaper articles, everything you can imagine, atlases, Sanborn maps. Okay. And um, I did put together a document that says how to research your house and or building. So I just finished that this last week, so I'm going to send that out. And maybe it's something, Jerry, we can put on the city website, too. Because it's just something generally that people, yeah. it talks about the resources and venues here that we have in Cadillac in order to do that and what your first steps would be. So I'll send it out and see what you all think. And 
don't have any suggestions or ideas, but that might be a good thing. And then also to let people know we want to promote what is at the museum so that people can take advantage of it. Good. I'll follow up on that. What about a newsletter for for this fall? Are we going to be able to do one or well, not? Since, if you know, we, we substituted one. Yeah. Right. for the newsletter, we substituted the letter that okay. went out. So we'll, uh, maybe what we'll do is after we hear your presentation, maybe we can do a newsletter that's geared towards that. Uh, okay. And that would be nice. Come on in, Sherry. Uh, there's a council up. meeting here in yep, yep, we're wrapping up. five minutes, so we, uh, well, we, could, we could do it then. That'd be uh, a good, okay. good, good thing to do. And the next meeting then for us is December. Well, it's December. Um, you know, if there's a work application, I will tell you this, historically, a lot of the uh, commissioners want to cancel that meeting, but that'll be up to you folks, so. Okay, well, we'll just email so we'll about that, open. depending on whether we have applications or not. Yeah, let's keep it open to see if we have an application. Okay. December 9th, correct? Monday. Second Monday. Second Monday. Okay. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Great. All right. Thank you. Anybody have anything else? Uh, I'd like to uh, note that... Um, we're glad that the uh, Cobbs and Mitchell building had a little repair work done mm -hmm. uh, and that we are still anxiously watching as the clock is ticking on uh, what may happen there. Uh, again, um, I, don't, I don't mean to bang this drum, but as those uh, potentials for the tax credits uh, come close to the end that poses additional difficulty mm -hmm. in seeing something happen to that building I think. When did those expire then? Well there was some... 2014 and 2015 I mean they're staggered yeah. Brownsville tax credits and also the historic state tax credits. And it may be that one of the things that this commission wants to do is to simply alert the city council as the as our charge would indicate we should do uh, that it's possible that, that yeah but there was some we don't know that okay. in a word don't know that well, I haven't seen a current update haven't looked Last we updated that, we did have current information up through, was it last year, uh, 2012? But we don't have anything for 2013. But there was still like a year or two left on that. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Well, I think it's a good point, and I think we should be aware of that. And um, as we get a little bit closer on that, maybe we do spring of next year review it again. We can be home. The office could get back to someone. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm going to keep it all I've got okay. information, too, that the council uh, does always get your approved minutes. Okay. And if there's anything of significance, uh, I alert, like Marcus, for example, okay. so he will bring it to their attention. So, Wonderful. Uh, and we commonly do that, just as a point of information. Great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, certainly one of the things, though, according to the charge for this commission, if we feel that that property in particular is threatened, we have an obligation to alert the council. You bet. Mm -hmm. And that would be more than just a comment in the, oh, in the yeah. minutes, I think. But I'm just saying, it, it provides a venue. Sure. For, uh, sure. You know, it's, a, it's a way for us to consistently inform council about what's going on. But yeah, you could do something uh, you know, separate from that it's as well. Of the law New best. Of the right, or a resolution. Not a, not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Something to watch then for next year. Up to the spring, I think. Any other public comments or comments from anyone? Okay, motion for adjournment. I move we adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Thanks.